Hi. It's uh, middle of January now, and um, I've just come out for a late Friday afternoon walk after work because the weather's quite calm. It's pretty cold. It's about two degrees plus, um, but it's not icy or wet. So I thought I'd make the best use of uh, a couple of hours of daylight's left and go for a walk. Off the main road, and this little tucked away footpath at the end. There's quite a few round here, and I like, like finding them out, seeking them out, getting away from the road, get a bit of mud on my boots. Old barn, completely decrepit apart from the structure. Mature tree growing up straight through the top. Quite nice coming down these paths. It's not far from home, a bit of countryside. Still in training for the West Highland Way. I've been keeping it going and uh, trying out some new winter kit. I'm not going to be uh, camping, but um, I need some warmer kit. I've got uh, a very thin, light puffer jacket. <laughs> and uh, that fits nicely underneath this coat and I've been trialling it out at uh, cold temperatures zero, one degree at night and that and uh, it's good instant warmth but not too much it slips on and off really easy which is, uh, which is important when you've got cold hands and you're trying to sort out a rucksack in the cold you just want to get it done and move on quick so that's pretty good I'm not going to bother with scarves, they're too sweaty but uh, this old this buff is pretty good as well. Although I've been walking in these cold temperatures every day, I haven't had, had to deal with much wind at all and in Scotland I'm sure it's going to be different. So I've got to sort that out, but that's okay. I'll get that sorted. Uh, I've got a slightly bigger rucksack than, uh, than I took on the coast to coast. I just bought exactly the same type. Uh, one size bigger because I know all the straps fit me well I know the the free flow uh, back cooling design worked very well in the hot summer last year so no need to change that and it's got bigger pockets for water bottles as well so that's good so uh, I think my kit's more or less sorted I've just got to keep on top of my fitness and uh, I'm looking forward to it Look at this raging torrent. It's a good job this bridge is here. There's no way I'd ever get over that. Three ways to go. Another little uh, thing that's come up on the cards, opportunity, there's a chance for me to go back up to North Yorkshire soon, uh, second half of February, uh, because we've got a wedding in the family and uh, we're invited up to that, which is great. And uh, a little side bonus, if I go up a day early, I'll be able to uh, get, travel to Richmond and walk that day on the coast to coast 
that I had to skip and take a taxi due to illness. I wouldn't do it on its own, just go up there on its own and come back down again. But as I'm going to be a few miles away for a wedding the next day, I'm going to be up there anyway. So I've kept my eye on the weather. It's not going to be a particularly inspiring walk. 23 miles, I think, across the flat farmers' fields and lanes in the middle of February. It might be, it might be rotten. <laughs> But if the weather's fine, it might be a good little end to the coast to coast. It's always nagged away at me a little bit that I didn't finish that completely because I missed out on that day. Like I say, I was, I was quite ill, couldn't manage it, but um, I had a fixed itinerary, so I needed to push on for my accommodation, but it might be worth doing it just for, uh, you know, complete the whole thing from one end to the other. Cross footpaths here. This one comes up. This is a Staffordshire Way up there. And this footpath cuts across. And slippy styles, of course, this time of year. I'll have to be careful. Look at this one. Half moon gate post to stand on. Everything's green and slimy. There's barbed wire here. Blimey, it's like it's like total wipeout. It's just waiting for me to do a face plant. Oh, sorry to disappoint. And into the open, open countryside. I've been avoiding coming down this bit for a month or so because I passed it on the other side, over there about a mile um, back then. And it was very watery, waterlogged the path, sloppy mud and water everywhere. So gave it a miss but it hasn't rained very much in the last month so it feels firmer underfoot than this bit anyway. Another bit of winter kit I've been testing out are gloves. Now just like you I've got loads of gloves. Small big rubbish ones, great ones but you know you're trying to use the mobile phone, you're trying to film, press buttons, sort out zips what I wanted was some um, quite tight fitting ones with the little, like these, I've got them on, uh, with the little fingertips so I can use a touch screen. And these work pretty well. They've also got a little fine rubber meshing on the palm for a bit of grip. Uh, they're not waterproof. I've got waterproof seal skins, but they're just, they're super gloves, but they're just too chunky for those things I was talking about. These ones, they're just like wind stoppers with the old uh, fingertip thing, which works pretty well. And I've, like I say, I've been testing them out at night to zero degrees for about one or two hour walks, and uh, they're good. Lower than that, when it gets to about minus one, it, that's about the limit of them. My hands get cold then, even with the gloves on. So, um, but the other good thing is you take these off and they, they crush down to smaller than your fist, really small. And so you stuff them in your pocket and they're not bulky in your pocket or anything. So yeah, that's another addition to my winter walking kit. Oh, mess up here. Oh, fence and I know that embankment is for the railway line and that's heading the wrong way. the backtrack. I think I should have skirted left to that copse rather than going inside it. I think that's where the, 
Oh, I think that's where the path went. I was right about the train there. Please lift bottom wire, dog gate, lamb gate. Nice. This bit of the path is quite narrow through some uh, private paddocks. So I'll make sure that I'll shut it properly because I'm a good boy. Carry on. Back out onto the lanes now. It's getting pretty dark. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but uh, anyway, yeah, back onto the lane. So here comes a car, right on cue. That's the first time I've been uh, cross country for a couple of weeks. Just that short two mile section or so. Of course, I like to stay on footpaths and street lamps so it's well lit and, you know, I don't get stuck down some muddy field stuck in the mud not knowing where I'm going tangled up in barbed wire or something silly in the pitch black it's started to rain now light rain and I checked the weather and uh, could turn into sleet as well but oh yeah I don't know if you can see that yeah it's snowing now but I don't mind it it's sort of uh, I'm warmed up now it's a good test of my uh, of my kit, and when I say my kit, I mean my sort of winter clothing to see how uh, how well it keeps me warm. But obviously, as a walker, you don't want to be overheating. You don't want to be too warm. Going to watch a football match and wrapping up warm is quite different for keeping warm on a walk. I'm finding this uh, puffer jacket, gloves, buff, do just just a great job of keeping me warm, but not overheating. Uh, the only thing about gloves is uh, really not to do with the gloves, it's the iPhone. Every time it switches off or goes dark screen, you have to input your six digit security pin code thing. And uh, doing that with gloves every single time is a bit of a pain in the neck. So you tend to uh, whip the glove off and just use your fingerprint recognition, but then your hands get cold. So I don't know. So I want to go up here, I've done about four miles and there's an area I know where I can have a cup of coffee. Cheers, if you can see me. 